So now let's talk about some ways to secure your DNS server. Now some of these will do in, one of these will do in the GUI and a couple of them will do at command line. So we're going to start out by enabling DNSSEC which assigns uh, the zone. So you do this on a zone by zone basis. You right click, go to DNSSEC and your options are to sign or unsign the zone or local properties. Now this is an unsigned zone so I only have one option, sign the zone. So I'll click on that and click next. Now in order for this to work, by the way, clients have to be DNSSEC aware, which most of them are, so it's a pretty good idea. It may add a little bit of time to your uh, DNS name resolution, but it's not going to be a huge issue. So we can customize zone signing properties or sign using default. Now default is probably going to be fine most of the time. You can also copy what you did on another zone, and that's what this option is here. So most of the time the des default zoning or default settings for signing the zone are going to be fine. We're going to go ahead and go through customize just so you can see what they are. So I'm going to click next and then one more time uh, next. Okay, now I need to add a key signing key. So I'm going to click add and it's going to automatically generate a GUID for me. And then I can use either pre-generated keys, which I don't have, or generate new key signing keys, which is default. So I'm going to go with that. And then here are key properties, um, signature valid period, key length, crypt, uh, cryptographic algorithm. You can see we can go through and change these if we want. We're just going to go ahead and use the defaults. But I did want you to see that you can adjust the key length, the storage provider, the signature valid period in hours. So let's go ahead and click OK, and that generates my key signing key, and I'll get rid of this because I don't need it, and click Next. Now we also need to create a zone signing key. So we'll click the zone signing key, and we'll add similar thing here. It'll automatically generate a GUID for it. We can set the properties of the key. We can enable key rollover, and I'm just going to click OK. So now we've created a key signing, a key signing key and a zone signing key. We'll click Next, and we're going to use NSX3. It's a little more secure. Updated version of the NSEC protocol. Click Next. We can enable automatic updates for trust anchors and enable the distribution of trust anchors for the zone. Now, this is not a domain controller, so that's not relevant here. So I'll click Next. And then Signing and Polling Parameters. Next, and that will sign for us. Now, I actually didn't change anything there. I just went through the default settings. Uh, but it showed you all of the elements that were there. Now, notice that this shows up as a, let's see our little icon. This is now a signed zone. And you can see that we also have a whole bunch of other stuff added to this. A bunch of signatures. It made this a lot bigger. So we've got an RR signature for basically everything. So it had a lot more to it, but that is now a signed zone, which is one of the security options. Now, that will help protect against, you know, if a client requests something, that if a client requests a record from us, by having the zone signed, then that kind of validates our response. And so it provides some protection against the client getting bad data. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up PowerShell here as administrator. And from PowerShell, we're going to add a couple of other DNS security things. So one of them is going to be a socket pool. So by default, DNS, when it does a recursive lookup, so it's querying another DNS server, it will send out through a request on UDP port 53. The problem is that a hacker who sees that will know that that's what it is and can try to send us bad data. So by enabling a socket pool, we can kind of randomize what port numbers that comes from to try to throw the attacker off. And so here's our command. It's DNS CMD, which is a DNS command line tool. It's a command line tool. It's not a PowerShell command, even though we're running it from PowerShell. It's a uh, command line tool to manage and monitor DNS. So I want to config and I am going to set my socket pool size and let's make this 5000. So that basically says we'll use 
5,000 ports and we'll randomly choose from this pool of 5,000 ports to try to throw off attackers. Now, another thing we can do is we can set our server cache and the idea behind our server cache locking. And the idea behind this is if we get a record, we uh, request a DNS record, we get a name resolution, we'll store that in our DNS cache. Well, cache locking stops that from being changed. And the idea there is to prevent an attacker from poisoning our cache by going in and changing it. And we can do this using DNS CMD or there is a PowerShell command. It's set DNS server cache. Uh, and we're going to set the locking percent. And I'm going to do this to, there we go, percent to 75. So what that does is it sets that, that locking percent is it sets... Let me do set instead of seat. Uh, there we go. That looks better. So when you get one of those entries and you cache it, you cache it for a specific period of time. So this says for that first 75% of that time, that record cannot be updated. Now, if something changes, that might create a problem. You can wait for Tage out. You can clear the cache, whatever. Um, but it does keep it from being overwritten right away by somebody who is attacking the system, trying to poison your DNS server cache. Another option we have is response rate limiting. And the idea here is to limit the number of responses that we send or the, the DNS server will send. So it's to basically forestall a denial of service attack where an attacker just floods us with DNS requests from spoofed IP addresses and just tries to bury our system in a denial of service attack. So we enable response rate limiting. And the command to enable this is just set DNS server RRL, which is response rate limit. Yes, I want to enable that. Okay. Now, notice the warning can lead to denial of service to clients if a flurry of similar requests are found originating from a common source. In other words, let's do a get DNS server RRL. And you'll see here that we're limiting this to five responses per second. So, and all of these are adjustable, by the way. The uh, So what happens is this thing will only respond to five responses per second. So if we're getting seven, eight, nine responses per second from the same source, then it's going to create a problem for that source. So that's just something to be aware of. So like most security things, adding extra security is great, but it can potentially create other problems for us depending on our environment. So we just want to watch it. If you enable some of these, uh, if you enable some of these tools, you're going to want to keep an eye on it and look and make sure that we didn't create another problem by trying to stop one, we didn't create another one. So a little bit of monitoring, especially in the you know first few days or a couple of weeks after you enable some of these security options will go a long way towards helping prevent problems farther down the road. Okay, there we go. Some ideas on how to add some security to your DNS server.